We're today at Bow Beach Reservoir to show you a nice, simple two rod approach for tackling these big wild venues. The fishing them are wild and the conditions can be just as wild. And some days 10 pound can be brilliant, other days you need 30, 40 pound. So it's all about counteracting the conditions as well as the amount of fish in your peg. Let's take a look at the gear we're going to be using. Right, the first rod is pretty much a traditional bream rig. Um, basically, the, the rod is a 12 foot parabolic feeder rod. Uh, it's very, very good for this style of fishing. It's, it's nice and soft in the tip, but it's got a bit of power through the middle of the rod, which you need when you're casting long distances. The reel, 4,000 4, size reel, um, loaded with a five pound main line, but with an eight pound shock leader on it. The eight pound shock leader is for taking a whack of the cast and uh, just prevents me cracking off. Moving down the rig, we've got a pretty standard Paternoster style rig. The feeder's tied onto a six inch loop and basically in the loop, just tied three overhand knots in it. That just closes the loop to st stop tangles and uh, stiffens it up a little bit. The, the tag from the loop should always come down level with that snap link swivel there. That just stops your, your hook length catching around your feeder and tangling all the time, which can be a problem when you're winding in a long way. The feeder itself is pretty much designed with distance as the main thing. The wind can really get up on these types of venues and you, you need to have something that you can always reach your mark with. Uh, these, these are front loaded feeders so they go straight through the wind and they come in various different weights. This is a 40 gram version which with the depth as well is very very important. The last thing you want is you to be using something too light that you can't tighten up to as you'll miss lot, not see many bites at all. The hook length itself, I like to use heavy hook lengths when I'm fishing like this. Again, because I'm be fishing with baits like maggots and worms, uh, you get a lot of spin on the way in and this stops the hook length spinning up and uh, tangling as well. Moving on to the hook, it's a size 16, B560 hook. I carry these in size 14 and size 12 as well, which I'll move on to a little bit later. Um, I'll tie these up at home, all in a hook length box. Um, tie them up all at three foot, so basically I don't, I don't have to tie one foot and two foot hook lengths. Basically, I can just trim them down and, and use them uh, as and when and how, how I feel the session's going. So that's that covered. So moving on to the other rod, which is a totally different setup altogether. And we use this one when the fishing really gets going and the fish really moving on the bait. Basically, the telltale for me to move on to this rod is when I cast in and I start getting bites straight away. And also another, another advantage of tying the loops into that pattern oster is when you bring it in, check the knots on the pattern oster for any signs of slime or anything like that. This gives you a really good indicator that the fish are coming to the, straight to the feeder itself and your hook length might be too long, which leads me nicely into this setup. Basically I've got a, a large open end MAP inline feeder and a very short hook length um, of about eight inches or so. This 017 line and a size 12 B560 this time and on that I'd be hooking two worms on anything like that. It's just basically this speeds up your bite time so when you're on a lot of fish you can cast this in and get a bite very, very quickly when the fish are coming to your feeder. That's as simple as it gets. The bait I've bought today is, could be best described as uh, a traditional bream display, really. Uh, got some casters, some dead maggots, 
some worms, uh, some chopped up worms, and basically all, all I've done is I've got a tub here, and before I start, I mix a little bit of all of these together. I get a big handful of casters, big handful of dead maggots, a little bit of chopped worm. I don't like to put too much chopped worm in. There's lots of little perch in these venues, and they can drive you mad when you're fishing a long way out. So I mix that together, and that, that's the mix of bait that I'll be using to put inside my ground bait feeder um, each time I cast in, and also when I'm feeding before I start fishing. The ground bait mix is a, a mix of bait tech, cold sweet fish meal, and special G gold. So that's it on the on the bait front. And let's get chucked in and see how we get on. All right, the distance I've decided to fish today is a 60 meter range and I've done this, measured this out using measuring sticks, I've done the same with both rods so I know they're fishing on the same, at the same range, you can't get that wrong. Um, traditionally a lot of anglers have counted the real turns back, now to me I find that a little bit inaccurate because you can never quite be sure that you've counted right or or if you haven't got the same rod and reel set up on your other rod, that it's going to be the same distance. So doing it with a stick, you can use any combo of rods and reels and all the rest of it, but you know that the length of line you've wrapped out is exactly the same. So that is the best way to get your distance. Like I say, I've decided to fish at 60 metres today. It's a fair cast. Um, basically, the biggest thing I can emphasize on this sort of venue is that if the weather changes you don't want to be fishing somewhere that you can't reach and often when you're setting up here it'll be flat calm and then the, ma the match starts typically and hurricane breaks out and you can't reach it so it's always worth just holding back a bit if it was fishing a match I would always recommend fishing at least as far as the people either side here or further it's a little bit like fishing on poles in, in a line of anglers. Generally, the angler who fishes further catches the most fish. So we'll get this filled up and uh, chuck in and see if we can catch some it. Distance casting takes a little bit of practice, to be honest. Um, the biggest mistake I see people making is they wind it too close to the rod tip. You, I like to have a nice three foot drop from the rod. Um, this gives me enough, in, enough to get the rod compressed properly and fire the feeder out. Secondly, you might, you might notice that I'm sat out a little way today. If I'd have sat on the bank, chances are my hook, when I'm casting, would touch the floor so this can blunt your hook or you can snap your hook off on the cast so I've sat out in the water today just to avoid that problem the cast itself is very very simple basically hold the rod out in front of me bring the rod back in one motion nice hard punch forward hit the clip Hold the rod under the surface to sink the line. It takes a very deep out there, it's about 25 foot, so it takes a while for my feeder to hit the bottom. Holding the rod under the surface sinks most of my line. So, still sinking, it's like a bottomless pit this is. Uh, just hit the bottom now, so chop my rod up to sink the rest of the line. And my rod set up. I like to use a backrest when I'm fishing like this because I feel if I was holding a rod I'd be very tempted to strike at small small plucks off fish. Basically I, I want to let the bite fully develop before I pick up on it. Obviously it's quite a time consuming operation to keep winding in for small bites so when I strike I want to be sure that there's a fish on. Before I started fishing, I put on a slightly bigger cage feeder and I cast the feeder in eight times without a hook length on. 
this gets me a little bit of bait down and it just gives me a little base to work on. If uh, there's a lot of fish present, I'll get bites straight away. If there's not, I haven't filled it in and ruined my peg before I've started. So it's all about just seeing what's out there first. If there's a lot of fish, you can up the bait. If there's not a lot, you can hold back and catch, you know, just, just pick out what you can really. So hopefully there'll be plenty. have it one on the last chuck of the day it's been a hard day today and uh had to work really hard for the fish that we've caught um just by keeping a little area building up not putting too much loose feed in the ground bait managed to catch quite a few little skimmers and towards the end it's just got better and better so give these give these little tricks a go on your local reservoir and Hopefully you too can catch plenty of skimmers. <laughs>